I am the baker today. I continue working on my water cabinet. In my last episode, I managed to finish the structure of the cabinet and sand it. Now I can vacuum all the pieces that I've made. Then I can start by spraying the bottoms. With René's help, we bring the structure and I can spray it. After several hours, the varnish is dry and we bring everything inside the shop and I lightly sand the finish. Then I clean the fine dust with a wet rag. Since it's too dark outside to do anything, I spray the second coat inside. The next morning, it's ready to go at its place. But before even thinking about it, I need to clean that spot. When all the junk is out of the way, I need to dismantle the last two sources, which are still in the shop. Then, with René's help again, we put the cabinet structure on the floor. After flipping it upside down, I drill a hole in the center of each leg for levelers. Then we can put the structure in its place. I have a nice structure, but nothing else. So I take a full sheet of plywood and cut it to the size of the top. But when I use a long straight edge, I can clearly see that I've botched that wall and it's not straight. Since I want a counter top tight against the wall, I trace its shape on the plywood. I also mark the shape of the corner post, then I can cut the counter top. When I'm done, I send the plywood smooth. Then I can try it in place. Oh yep, it's way better like this. And I can't even see that I've botched that wall. Now I can trace and cut the other end. Now that the counter is perfect, I need to get the formica that I've kept just for that. This piece is not big enough for the whole countertop. I'll have to glue three pieces. But to do that, all their edges have to be straight. So I'm using the plywood leftover as a straight edge to make sure their sides are straight. Then I can spread the first coat of contact cement on top of the counter. When I'm done with the countertop, I spread glue under the formica. After 20 minutes or so, the glue is dry to the touch. 
I can spread the second coat. I always spread two coats of contact cement. I find that the first coat always seeps into the wood and with just one coat, it doesn't stick as much. After waiting nearly half an hour, I can place wood strips over the glue and lay the formica on top. Then, after making sure the formica is at the right spot, I remove one stick at a time and roll press the formica. I do the same thing two more times. But for those, I have to be careful to align both edges of the formica together. When I'm sure I've rolled everywhere, I use a flush trim bit to cut the formica excess. I use lacquer thinner to clean the contact cement, which end up on top of the counter. I like the looks of the formica, but the exposed plywood edges, not so much. So I'll do the same thing I did for my miter station and put some edging. I begin by transforming part of this chunk of maple into countertop edging. After cutting one side straight, I can mark its exact length and cut the other side at 45 degrees. When both sides are done, I mark the domino's mortises placement and cut them. Before doing anything else, I make a dry assembly. Since everything works as planned, I remove everything and glue the edging. While the glue is drying, I can drill the holes which will hold the countertop in place later. I can also make the shelf. It will be identical to the miter station one. So I find a piece of plywood and cut it in two. Then I can drill mortises so I can glue both pieces together. The next morning, I can drill for the shelf pins. Since I don't have the top in place, it's easier to screw the drawer slides in place. Then I can screw the bottoms of the cabinet. Now that the glue is dry, I can route a round over on the edges. After a nice sanding, I can brush the first coat of finish on the edging. I also want to varnish the bottom of the countertop. But since the edges are still wet, I need to bug René again. Then I can brush the bottom. 
Before cleaning the brushes, I also varnish the shelf. When both coats of varnish are dry, I spray a coat of glue under the counter and stick aluminum foil on it. I stick this so both sides of the counter will be impervious to moisture. Then I can put it in place. Remove the painter's tape and screw it. I've already installed the drawer slides, but I don't have any drawers. All my shop drawers are made from recycled hardwood flooring. Since I don't have enough to make those drawers, I'll use old drawers to make my new drawers. But I have a small problem. They're not long enough. So, to glue two pieces together, I quickly made a jig so I'll be able to glue two boards ends to ends. When all the patterns are cut, I use epoxy that I've taken with silica powder to glue them together. I leave that alone all night, and the next morning, I can sand the excess glue. After making sure both sides of some of my glue ups are straight, I re-glue them together as a big panel. When I'm waiting for that to dry, I take the opportunity to make some triangular plywood edging. I managed to make a bunch of them. I'll just put them aside for later. Now that the glue is dry, I can sand the panel that I've just glued. Then I cut strips for my drawer sides. I wanted to do something different than the last time, so all the dovetails were end cut. Okay, not everything is hand cut. I cut the waist with my scroll saw. One thing's for sure, if I had used my dovetail jig, those drawers would have been finished a long time ago. While I'm cutting some pins or tail, my logo is being carved on the side of each drawer. Okay, now I have two drawers ready, but I went a little bit too fast. I should have plugged the old drawers bottom before gluing them together. Now I have to plug them. I leave them aside to let the glue dry. But when it's dry, I can plane the strips flush with the rest of the wood. Next, as funny as it sounds, I have to cut my own groove at the bottom of each piece. Now I can reassemble it all and measure the size of the bottom and cut them.
Because the way the structure is made, I have to cut a small corner of each side. Now I can sand everything before gluing them together. I still have a lot to do to complete this water cabinet. Like waiting for all the glue to dry. But you'll be able to see the complete cabinet in the next episode of The Woodpecker. Yeah.